Okay guys, so today this video is going to look at Home, Wife Who Smashed Television Gets Jail by Paul Durkin. So before we start looking at the poem, I want you to think about some of the themes that are going to come up. So based on your experience, do you believe that entertainment technology, things like televisions, social media, phones, computers, etc. bring people together or do, do they separate people? And are these types of media and entertainment better for bringing people close together and having a better common understanding or do they actually separate it out more because they reduce face-to-face -face and human interaction? Right, so the function of today's lesson is to read through and understand the poem Why Who Smashed Television Gets Jail and then obviously understand the language and the context and feature the social uh, implications or social com commentary going on through this poem. Right. Now, for most people, we'll go back to this question that I put over a few minutes ago. For most people, they will say things like, yes, social media especially and different technologies such as mobile phones can be great in helping to organize uh, our lives and great in helping open up communications in certain circumstances, you know, especially when we're traveling abroad, you know, having that link back to uh, home. However, there's also the indication or the idea that actually when we're with people, that these technologies and uh, social media can get in the way of our interacting and stop us having meaningful experiences. So that you know, instead of sitting at home talking to our family, we're all sitting at home all on our phones and not actually paying attention to each other. Now, the poem we're looking at today was written in the 1970s, and much like nowadays we talk about social media and we talk about all our phones having this effect, at the time the idea of television was being critiqued as was this having an effect on family bonding time, family quality family time together. So that's some of the ideas that are going to come across in this particular poem. Alright, so look at home itself. Wife who smashed television gets jail. She came home, my lord, and smashed in the television. Me and the kids were peaceably watching Kojak, when she marched into the living room and declared that if I didn't turn off the television immediately, she put her boots through the screen. I didn't turn it off, so instead she turned it off. I remember the moment exactly because Kojak, after shooting a dame with the same name as my wife, snarled at the corpse. Good night, Queen Maeve. And then she took off her boot and smashed in the television. I had to bring the kids round to my mother's place. We got there just before it finished with Kojak. My mother has a fondness for Kojak, my lord. When I returned home, my wife had deposited what was left of the television into the dustbin, saying, I didn't get married to a television. And I don't see why my kids or anybody else's kids should have a television for a father or a mother. We'd be much better off all down in the pub talking or playing bar billiards. Whereupon she disappeared back off down again to the pub. Justice O'Breda said wives who preferred bar billiards to family television were a threat to the family which is a basic unit of society. As indeed, television itself could be said to be a basic unit of the family. And when as, is the, as, in the case, as in this case, wives expressed their preference from forms of violence, jail was the only place for them. Leave to appeal was refused. Okay, so first impressions, what do we think of this poem? Based on your reading, why do you think the wife smashed the television? How did the narrator, so that's the husband, react to this situation? And what do you think of this reaction? What do you think the poet is trying to suggest about the television from the poem? And how does the poem portray the wife character? What do you think Durkin is trying to suggest with this portrayal? Okay, so I'm going to put the poem back up again. Now, I suggest you pause the video here for a few minutes, read through the poem yourself three or four times. Make sure you know you need to have a good familiarity with these poems before we do deep analysis. Okay, so going back to those questions, you know, most people would suggest that the wife smashes in the TV because she is fed up of her children watching it and not spending family time together. Okay? However, there's the added element that she's just back from the pub and it's possibly the influence of alcohol that is making her go to such extreme actions. Uh, the narrator, he reacts to the situation by bringing his children over to his mother's. Now, he may in the first reading seem like an excellent father here protecting his children, however there is a underlying issue of what they're watching on TV, which we're going to discuss as we go into the poem. What do you think he's trying to, the poet's trying to suggest about television? 
was definitely trying to make us think about the place the television is taking. So having Justice Ogreda at the end say that the television is a basic union family is definitely trying to make us question where or what are we allowing television to do within our lives, what uh, role is, are we allowing it to play. Um, the, the wife character, you know, she's a complex character. You know, she's not just a violent person, there's a lot going on here, so we do need to look at her throughout the poem and the different lines given who we portray her and how she what the what impression we want to get of her. Okay, so the title, the title of this poem is particularly important because you'll notice that it is lacking a certain uh, grammatical uh, necessity, use of words and grammar. Um, so the wife who smashed television gets jail. So there's a lack of either the definite or indefinite articles here. Um, so usually, you know, you would see to say the wife who smashed the television gets jail or a wife who smashed a television gets jail. There is no definite, the definite article being the and the indefinite article being a. There is no articles being used here. This suggests that it's not, the wife's may not be a specific person and that he's actually making overall more general commentary. Uh, the use of the term wife in this way can be seen as derogatory. He could be commenting on the sexism of the time, right? Especially when we look at that final comment by Justice O'Brien, wives who do this. It's not saying people, it's saying wives who do this. We're going to look at that as well. Uh, the character's not giving any individuality. Okay? Uh, so it could suggest that the society gives her different forms. Right? There's also, you can look at the fact this is uh, a journalistic style of writing. The title of this poem is, sim is uh, similar to what we would see as in the headline of a newspaper, okay? probably a tabloid newspaper. Right, so it's that kind of journalistic style of writing rather than poetic style. Uh, just obviously hyperbole going on and introduce the, 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 the ludicrous idea of what's going on in this poem. You know, this idea she can get job smashing TV is just crazy. And, um, and again, there's a lack of the article before television. It could suggest that the television here, the television she's smashing, uh, is symbolic of something much bigger. Uh, for the representation of a bigger idea within family life and within society. Okay, so the title of this poem is very, very important. There's a lot being suggested through the title of this particular poem. Alright, so if we break it down, now remember this poem is written as a single stanza, we're simply breaking it down here for ease of analysis. So, lines 1 to 10. She came home, my lord, smashed in the television. Me and the kids were peaceably watching Kojak. When she marched into the living room and declared, that I didn't turn off the television immediately, she put her boot through the screen. I didn't turn it off, so instead, she turned it off. I remember the moment exactly, because Kojak, after shooting a dame with the same name as my wife, snarled at the corpse. Good night, Queen Maeve. Then she took off her boots and smashed in the television. Okay, so, a few things to think about. Does the wife in the poem seem unreasonable in her initial request for the television to be turned off? Why do you think she wants this? Uh, who comes across as more likeable at the beginning of the poem and why? And uh, does the opening scene of the poem before the actual smashing come across as familiar? Is it something we relate to? So, we would say that, you know, the request the wife makes of turning off the TV may not seem totally unreasonable, but it is um, flanked by this idea of she marched into the living room and she says turn it off immediately, which suggests that maybe she's being overly forceful in her request. Okay, so it may not be a crazy request, perhaps she is coming across as being aggressive and not requesting it in the right way. So straight away it seems that you know, the idea is not crazy, but the way she's acting perhaps is not exactly the way she should be acting to get the request she who desires. Um, at the beginning you would it would come across that the husband is the more likable figure here. However, you need to notice the punctuation mark at the very beginning of the poem. The poem, or the, verse, the majority of the poem, is written as the first 21 lines are written through the words of the, of the husband. So of course he's coming across more likeable because he's the narrator who's going to portray himself in a positive light. Right? So yes, the husband comes across, the, the narrating husband comes across very much as the more likeable character at the beginning. And there's definitely things we can read into here. Okay, there's definitely more to it when we look through the lines. That's the way it comes across, and that is mainly because it's him speaking. And does the opening scene just come across familiar? 
Before smashing, yeah, I'd say most people would be able to relate to this idea of one parenting and being angry and telling them, saying, oh, that TV needs to be turned off or video game or those phones just go away or whatever it is nowadays. But yeah, the image is something we most of us would see as being somewhat familiar. Okay, so looking at notes, and I know it's a lot of on the board, we'll go through it bit by bit. Okay, don't worry, we'll, go, we'll get through all of it. So in the yellow box up at the top, we notice that it says that the use quotation marks uh, tells the first 21 lines are direct speech. Okay, the use of the term "my lord, my lord" is uh, he's speaking to the judge. Okay, so what's happening is this is the husband's testimony in court. The husband is standing up and testifying against against his wife in court as to what has happened and telling the judge what she has done. Uh, the use of the word "peaceably." Contrasts against the verbs used to describe the wife's actions. So he's saying, Oh, we're being very peaceful. We're not doing anything wrong. Where she's marching in, she's putting her boot through the TV. Okay, he's very much trying to portray himself as the perfect innocent parent, and her as she, he's villainizing her, and he's attempting to defame his wife in the court. However, um, it's notable, uh, it has to be noted that while the wife is coming across as unreasonable, what the husband the father is doing is he's watching a program that is known for violence, Kojak is known for violence. And even if we didn't know that from our, aunt, from our own uh, background, we can see later on in line 9, uh, that this, he's, or line 8 and 9, that he's killing. He's, the Kojak involves shooting of a woman and snarling at the corpse. And it's not just, you know, it's just snarling at the corpse is a vicious, vicious image, okay? So the program that his husband is showing to is. Uh, children, even though he seems to think that's okay, we would definitely need to question why he's watching such a violent program with his children. Okay? And they seem young children because they're being brought into grandmothers, you know, whatever age they are though, it's definitely inappropriate content for him to be watching with them. Uh, so we skip down a few lines out of this green box, it's notable um, that he openly describes the violence of the program. So we're looking at this program. The husband is very open, like, oh yeah, of course I'm watching Cold Jack with the kids. And he even points out that the, the woman that's killed in it has the same name as his wife. Um, you know, that the man is starting at the corpse, the husband doesn't seem to see, see anything wrong with showing this violence to his children. So when we look at what the wife does in smashing the TV, you know, he is showing the children violence against humans, and yet he is so astounded and so abhorred by the fact that his wife is being violent in real life by smashing a TV. You know, why is why is what she does any worse than what he's doing showing the inappropriate content to the children? Um, the term dame there in that line, line uh, eight, is derogatory and Americanism. So there's a few things going on here. We have we talked about the derogatory use of the term wife, right? Um, throughout the home. This idea of dame is again derogatory. And it's Americanism, so he's being critical here, of course, being critical both of the sexism of the world but also of the Americanization of Irish society through the television. And he's suggesting that both sexism and Americanization are being spread by the television. So it's definitely bringing you know, us into questioning why, the, why we're putting any kind of importance to the television. Okay? Um, throughout all these lines, when he's describing it, the narrator seems uh, quite excited, you know. Why would he? This is irrelevant information. If he's, he likes it and he's excited by it, so he wants to tell the judge all about it. Right? So this remorseless murder is something that he sees as acceptable, yet the actions of his wife are seen as being so unacceptable. Uh, the choice of the name Maeve is particularly important. Queen Maeve refers to a mythological character from Irish tradition. So Maeve is a warrior queen, equal to both her husband and wealth and strength. So she was very much, you know. An icon of uh, equality between men and women in uh, the ancient mythological world of Ireland, but by killing her, the poet is highlighting the effect that television has against the position of the wife, that the television is taking away her strength and her position at home. And you know, even the strongest, even someone like Queen Maeve, the strong warrior queen, would not be able to stand up against the power of the television in modern society. Okay, so, lots and lots going on here in this poem. So, a few questions to think about. Why do you think the Polish chose to describe fathers watching a violent program with his children? Okay. Uh, do you agree with any of the points which have come up so far? And what is your opinion of the father in his home? Now that we've looked through the lines, 
we looked at the immediately what's going on. Do we, you know, when our first meeting, initial reading, we said that the mother is, uh, the father's more likable. Is he actually when we examine what's going on here? Moving on, lines 11 to 21. I had to bring the kids round to my mother's place. We got there just before the finish of Kojak. My mother has a fondness for Kojak, my lord. When I returned home, my wife had deposited what was left of the television into the dustbin, saying, I didn't get married to a television, and I don't see why my kids or anybody else's kids should have a television for a father or a mother. We'd be much better off all down the pub, in the pub talking or playing barber games. Whereupon, she disappeared back off down again to the pub. So on lines 10 to 12, do you find these surprising at all? Okay, so these are lines. We got there just before we finished with Kojak. My mother has a great, has fondness for Kojak, my lord. Um, does the wife seem reasonable in her explanation of her actions? Do you think the poet is trying to achieve something with these lines? Yeah. Well, why does the poet describe the wife goes back down to the pub? Alright, so lines 12 to 13. What we might find surprising here is the fact that Kojak, this violent, violent program, seems to be almost a family tradition that the grandmother father and then children are all watching but it's incredibly violent and then you know not a program designed for our children okay so there seems to be a family um, connection through this program but all of us especially if that's the right way for families to make connections okay that's what's going on there with all of them watching Kojak together uh, her explanation you know she's becoming a little bit more understandable here okay it does seem reasonable I didn't get married to a television, I don't see why my kids or anyone else's kids should have a television for father or mother. You can definitely you know, see her logic in those lines, right? And so Paul is trying to make, take, yes, her extreme actions, but were her extreme actions actually necessitated by the family's reliance on the television? Um, but then that's undercut again, there's a number of you know, conflicting issues going on here, the wife's going back to the pub, okay? is implying a possible alcoholism on her part and her marriage. All right, so the go to go through this line by line. I had to bring the kids around to my mother's place. There's an addiction to television is highlighted in these lines here. Paul describes how he has to take the children to his mother's house. We initially think this might be for protection, but then it seems like it's actually just to watch the program. That's what he's more concerned about seeing the rest of the program rather than either protecting his children or dealing or trying to help his wife, who's you know, gone to such an extreme event. Uh, he's creating a dark satire of our world here. Nice few words there, dark satire. The poet is um, making wants us to think and critique our world and our reliance on television. He however uses a light hearted tone describing the mother grandmother's fondness for television um, and implies that this is something that affects all different people. Our entire society is affected by this. It's not just this one little household of the father and mother and the children, the grandmother, it's outside their household. This is something that permeates throughout society. Um, yes, the wife's explanation of her actions, they do seem familiar and sympathize with her desire to build a relationship. However, she then suggests bringing the children to the pub, which is also not a particularly great way to be, to be bringing children, at least not in our modern view. Though do remember this is written in the 70s where bringing children to the pub would be, but still maybe not when taught about in detail the best place to bring children was much more common than it would be nowadays. Uh, there's a deliberate role reversal of typical of typical 1970s parents. Okay? And he's doing this for a reason. So you the typical idea, the stereotypical idea of what we would see that the father would be down the pub and the mother would be home with the kids. Okay? Now the reason Durkin is reversing this is because it seems shocking to us that the, the mother is doing this. But why does that seem shocking? Why is it more shocking for the mother to do this? than it would be for a father to do this. So he's asking us to question the, our, uh, the inequalities between sexes or gender stereotypes about what people how people act by making the wife do something and the fact that we critique her so harshly for it. He's asking us the question, would we critique the husband as harshly for and why would we do that? Okay. And also then, you know, the, uh, just going to link in with later on when we're looking at when the judge says that wives who do this deserve jail, uh, would he have said the same for the husband? Uh, overall, the husband's testimony, just the first 21 lines, you know, we've noticed that punctuation at the end of line 21 again, and the husband's testimony shows that he has more love for the television than for his wife or indeed any relationship. 
he loves Kojak and uh, more than anything. Okay, he doesn't want to provide proper parenting to his kids, he's not interested in that. He's bonding with his own with the grand with his mother since so he's been through the TV. He's uh, he's not concerned about his wife and her mental state, he's more concerned about the TV or when he returns. His concern is that she's putting the TV in. Bed. Okay, that's where his attention is clearly drawn to all the time. Alright, so a few things to think about. Who do you think is the better parent in the poem? Alright, it's definitely neither nor perfect by any means, okay? You can definitely think about who is the better one. You know, the mother seems to have better intentions, however, the father is the one with the poem, the one who's in the club. You know, there's two sides to this story. It's definitely a complex relationship going on. Do you think the poet has made a good point about the influence technology on relationships in the section of the poem? Okay, has the wise, have the wise words resonated with you? And do you think the poet is trying to critique sexism in this poem? Do you think there's enough there that we can really talk about that as a, as a theme of the poem? Alright, down to the last five lines then. Justice O'Breda said wives who preferred bar billiards to family television were a threat to the family, which is a basic unit of society. As indeed, the television itself could be said to be a basic unit of the family. But when, as in this case, wives expressed their preference in forms of violence, jail was the only place for them. Leave to appeal was refused. So, what does justice, the justice tell us about television? Uh, what is the poet attempting to suggest about modern society here? And does the sentence imposed at the end of the poem seem reasonable? Why is the poet made it this way? What literary technique is the poet using here? So, Justice O'Breda tells us that television is a central aspect of modern family life. Uh, he seems to be supportive in that view through his statement. The poet is definitely asking us to ask us to critique that. Uh, what is the poet attempting to suggest in modern society? He is attempting to suggest that television is becoming is permeating all aspects of our lives and that our relationships are suffering as a result of it. And at the end, the wife is sentenced to jail. This is, you know, just hyperbole going on here, exaggerating the sentence of the wife is getting in order to show how extreme our lens we are going to to protect the television rather than to protect and think about our own families. So he's made it, he really wants us to create, he wants it to stand out as being ludicrous in order to make us, to force us to reflect upon it. Right? And that final sentence, that short sentence, leave to appeal and refuse, very much back to the journalistic style that's been going on throughout it. A short sentence, infinity, definite, you know, making us, making, making the sentence stand out even more so. Alright, so, notes on this last section. The specification of wives rather than people hints at the double standards of the time he is commenting on the sexism of the time. Uh, if we look then over at this blue box, there's a serious point to be made in the comment of the dangerous alcoholism. However, the suggestion of placing the addiction of alcohol to the addiction of TV seems ludicrous, yet we've accepted it. It's not something, you know, something that's happened in the world and we seem to accept it. We accept the addiction to television, it's more so when we don't accept the television addiction to alcohol. There's reasons for that, but we are still promoting addiction in this. He's the judge still promoting addiction in this home. Um, there's a clear use of hyperbole throughout this last few sections of a the fact that he's referring to the television as basic human family. Uh, it's just a polish trying to highlight how badly the situation seems to be. Um, it's also, however, a frightening notion that we are so addicted to television that, you know, it's becoming part of the family. It's true. Okay? Um, when in the case of wives expressed, so again, expressed in the second last line, expressing wives during the sentencing, it's a sense of uh, righteous indignation, okay, a sense of uh, misogynistic, chauvinistic ideas going on here, okay. But he is a symbol, a symbol of the law, and the law is sexist within this poem. And then finally, we have the journalistic style going throughout, okay, uh, an informed with clear report which insinuates that the points here are factual. Okay, so he's giving validity to what he's saying. This is not his opinion of things, this is not his view of things, this is the facts of what is happening in society as Durkin sees it. Okay. Another poignant thing we need to know about this poem is that Maeve, the wife, the whole entire poem is about her, but she is not given a voice. Her fate is decided upon by men, and she is not even allowed to defend herself in this home. Okay? So, it's definite commentary on how men are acting towards women in society in the 1970s in this home. Okay? So, just think about why do you believe the maid is not given a voice? Okay? Do you agree with the assertion of television or more modern technologies in modern life? 
have they secured the third family in modern society? And why does the quote end the poem with a final short sentence? Okay, so a few questions to think about in terms of this poem. Uh, by the end, whose side do you want? Yeah. Are you on? Are you on the mother's side, the wife side? Yeah. And is she right? Yeah. Or is there a number of issues with what she's done? Or are you on the father's side? Why? Or are you somewhere in the middle? What do you think is the central message of this poem? Do you think Dark and Believe have, has done a good job in conveying the message? Okay, what is he trying to get us to think about in this poem? Okay. Is there too much going on for us to really ground into one single aspect? Uh, Durkin's father was a judge. We need to remember this and we need to think about what we learned about his father. We look at the poem's support and his relationship with his father. Do you think this may have influenced his writing of his poem? What might this poem suggest about his feelings towards his father? So there's a few little things we can read there as comparative points, perhaps, than looking at this poem in, uh, in an essay and linking the poems together. Uh, the poem clearly critiques the influence of television on family life in the 1970s. You know, could be a good practice there to write an article uh, critiquing some things that you believe has an excellent effect on contemporary.